and welcome back to Making Sense of Money, a podcast dedicated to making tough financial topics easier to understand. I'm Nikki Jankola Shanks, one of your hosts. And I'm Andrew Pellegrini. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that I've brought up several times on previous episodes. We're going to talk about password managers. I personally, because Andrea talks about it so much, when I hear the words password manager, I automatically think of Andrea. So for our listeners that may have not had the pleasure of hearing you talk about password managers in the past, can you tell us what they are? So they're a brilliant invention. Password managers allow you to remember, ideally, one very long, complicated password or passphrase. And then it can save your login information for all different types of sites or apps that you have. So I usually like to describe it as a tool to allow you to use one password to rule them all. Very nice. Lord of the Rings nod, Andrea. So why should people consider using a password manager? I happen to have an iPhone. I know that my passwords and things like that can automatically be stored but it's not necessarily a password manager, I do not think, that comes up with a totally random one. It is a password manager. So Keychain is the kind of branded tool there that Apple uses as a password manager. There are different types of features that we can talk about later, but to address your first question, why people should consider using a password manager. In the past, we might have said that the best practice for passwords would have been to create a password that's hard to guess, that's not associated with anything that you like or your life, like don't use your kid's name or your dog's name, that also has both letters and numbers, maybe some special characters like an ampersand or exclamation point or whatever, and don't write it down. That was kind of like what we did now. We have so many different things to remember, so many usernames and passwords and sites that it's really in your best interest to use something like a secure password manager instead of writing all of those things down in a text document on your device or in a notebook that you hide in your desk. Because if you did the previous best practice, you might have used that one password for everything. If you would have used that one password for everything and one of your multiple accounts gets compromised or hacked, then the rest of your accounts can get hacked as well. So if you use different passwords for everything, then it lowers your risk of having all your accounts compromised. And password managers can be used on multiple devices and they can sync information for your different accounts. So you can just click a few buttons to log into websites on your laptop or on your phone on the same website. So it's very versatile or a lot of them are very versatile depending on what devices you use, if you want to pay for a password manager or anything like that. So just to give our listeners a little bit more background, because I personally am a very visual person. So The password manager is something that's on your phone, laptop, whatever, and it literally has all your usernames and passwords stored in it. And then you need to log into your password manager in order to pull the correct password out. Yes. So there are lots of different password managers out there and they function in, in relatively different ways. But like, for instance, you talked about the Apple keychain. So because you can log in with your Apple ID on multiple devices, then you can use Keychain if you enable it on all those different devices. So it syncs across all your different devices. It's like a back end, right? There are other types of password managers that are basically like a web, web-based web database, but you can integrate them into different devices. So let's say you have a laptop that is PC and you have a phone that's an Apple device using a different type of password manager, not Apple Keychain might be better because you can use 
some of the tools that they create to work on different types of devices. For instance, I think Bitwarden and LastPass, which are two different examples of password managers, they also have a web browser plugin that you install on Chrome or Firefox or the different desktop browsers that exist. And you can use them on your desktop or computer or laptop computer. But they also have apps on your phone that you can use when you're trying to log in to apps on your phone or on websites. So that's an, a way of how they function differently. And so you might choose one that works for your needs rather than using what you might just have access to, right? You have an Apple phone. So using Keychain might be helpful for you because it's easily accessible. Thank you, Andrea, for, for kind of explaining how that functions. Andrea, are there any costs to using a password manager? So some password managers, like we've already talked about, are integrated into the systems we use. Like Google has a password manager. If you use Chrome or Android, Apple has iCloud Keychain that we've talked about a lot. Um, If you use multiple devices, like I I just talked about earlier, having one of those third-party password managers might function better for you. A lot of times you have to pay to use the third-party password managers. There might be a subscription to be able to log in on multiple devices, but it might also have other features, like you can share specific passwords with a partner or family members. You might have encrypted notes that you can take in those different password managers. So sometimes they have more features that you might be more willing to pay for, but there are free versions. Andrew, what are some features of password managers that make them safer than, say, a text document on your password-protected computer or your locked phone? So the main benefit of using a password manager instead of a text document is that you use encryption for that additional layer of protection most of the time. Your phone might have thumbprint or face ID but many dedicated password managers, like some of the third-party ones I've mentioned, just use multi-factor authentication in addition to having to log into your phone or log into your desktop. So you have to have an additional authentication method. And for those of you that might not be aware, multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication is that feature that requires you to receive a text or a push notification to approve a login from a separate device usually. Sometimes I know depending on what it is, it could you could even request a phone call depending on what you're trying to log into and what that institution uses. Like, for example, I know my bank, we have a choice that we could do like email, text, or phone call. What are some things to consider if you're comparing password managers to use or purchase a subscription for? So when choosing a password manager, you might want to think about your needs, obviously, not just what I tell you to pay attention to, but You might want to think about, do you need to share passwords with someone else, like your spouse or other family members? Do you want to use it for storing encrypted notes, not just passwords, like we've talked about earlier? Most of them also have a feature for automatically filling username and password details in a website or on an app if you're logged in to that password manager on browser plugin or in your on your phone in an app. So you might want to think about that. If you log in to a lot of different places throughout the day, it will save you time in some cases. Another feature that you can look for is how many devices you can have the password manager on. Some free versions of password managers may limit you to only being logged in on one device instead of multiple devices. So that can get kind of confusing, right? If you're only logged in on your phone and you're trying to do work on your computer and you have to check on your phone in order to, you know, that might get complicated. So those are some major features to look into. And I'm sure that there are more that we haven't talked about that you might want to look at. So Andrea, what about security, like data security? Wouldn't these password managers be a target for cyber criminals the same way that, you know, you and I talk a lot about fraud and 
identity theft and, and things like that, wouldn't a password manager be the same type of thing? So password managers are often a target for cyber criminals because it's you just have to hack one password and then you get access to a bunch of other passwords. But it may be a good idea if you're comparing different password managers to look at the, the history of security incidents for a particular password manager before deciding to do business with them. For example, when I was doing some additional research for this episode, I found an article by CNET that explicitly left LastPass, which is one of the most well-known password managers off of their recommended list for password managers in 2023 because of how they handled a data breach in December of 2022. So that can change over time as well. So reassessing your needs, similar to how you reassess your budget needs, reassessing your financial security tools and whether or not they're meeting your needs is also very effective. But one thing that is interesting about the way that password managers typically function is that not even the company has access to your password information. So it is very difficult to access your password manager. If you lose your passphrase or password to access that tool, you won't be able to get in without an extreme amount of hassle. Or you might have to create a completely new password manager. I've had that happen to family members before. They didn't have a backup passphrase saved or they forgot the password that they use. And so they had to reset all of their hundreds of password logins. That's really interesting. I didn't realize that they didn't have the password. Yeah, so it's... Your password is held in a digital vault and only you have access to that digital vault. The company cannot see the information in it because of the encryption. Very interesting. So Andrea, you know, you've always talked about password managers and I always said I needed to learn more. But I think for me doing this little interview with you, I think the most surprising thing for me is that I already do kind of use one because I use Apple Keychain, but I never realized, I think, the potential for everything that it could do. I, for example, I would always usually ask, like, use strong password or create your own. And I always did create my own because I thought I'm never going to re- remember this strong password again. But that's the whole point is that they, they do the it password. for you. <laughs> yeah. Like I just, I didn't realize that. So I'm hoping that maybe some of our other listeners also may not have realized that and that this is not so daunting. Because I know for me, when we would talk about it, I'm like, oh my God, I can't like one more thing to remember and to get on my computer, you know, that it's, it may not be nearly as big of a lift as you may think it is. (laughs) Because one thing that I found is really helpful is, you know, there are a lot of tools you can use to see if your password or your email address has been part of a data breach. Have I been pwned, which we can put in the show notes, is a tool that you can use to see if your password or information has been disclosed in a data breach, a public one, like obviously. So if I notice that my credentials have been compromised on one of those data breaches using a tool like that, it's a lot easier for me to go through my password manager and update all of my relevant logins would just curate a new password for me. I don't have to think about it. I can just save it. I don't have to think about what's one that I will remember or that's easy to type in. You can like create that sometimes with the criteria you set up when creating a new password that they do for you, the password manager does for you. It makes it a lot easier and things go a lot faster. <laughs> Well, it's interesting that you're saying this because as you're talking, I'm thinking about, you know, my husband and I were victims of check fraud just a month or so ago. And just 
redoing everything. And then even though that was the only account that got hacked, right, we did go and change passwords to like basically everything because we're like, I don't know what else this person may have. And it took me forever because I was like trying to remember. And then some of these that I'm automatically logged on, I don't remember. Like, so I can see how if your identity or something is hacked into, you know, it would be a lot easier from experience to just be able to go in and click one thing and have everything be changed because it was definitely a hill that we had to climb up trying to fix all of our passwords again. Yeah. And you still have to go in and log in and change it in that website or service or whatever, but just curating one and pressing save is a lot easier than trying to think like, what is this? Is this one going to be unique? Is this? Yeah. Yeah. I am. I forget a lot of things. So that would also make sense. I know at work for the state, we are required, I think it's every 30 days now to change our login credentials. And it's always very hard for me because I'm like, wait a second, I'm logging back in. Now I need to come up with a new password. I understand why they want us to change them so often, but it definitely, um, passwords are just a thing that is part of society now that we're going to have all of these digital passwords and digital logins that coming up with a system to manage it is important. I agree. Obviously why I'm a big supporter of password managers. Yes. So if you've been keeping your passwords in a notebook or in your desk drawer or using the same password for everything, which many people, including myself at times, have been guilty of, hopefully you now feel empowered to choose a password manager to keep yourself and your money a little bit safer. As always, thanks for listening to Making Sense of Money. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, SoundCloud, or Spotify.